A new drug is on its way and a lot of people are saying it's the female equivalent to Viagra. I'm Jennifer Sanasi, you're watching News 24 Live. I'm joined in studio by sex and relationship columnist Dorothy Black and she's going to give us her opinions on this new drug. Hello. Hi, my opinions on big pharmaceuticals. Yes, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, the drug hasn't actually hit the market yet. No. It's been approved by the FDA Correct, yeah. and it's on its way to us. I'm assuming, yeah, at some point. So is it the female equivalent to Viagra? No. A lot of people are saying that. Yeah. I think because because they weren't really smart, they made it the pink pole for women and the blue pole for men, like oh my Viagra. Gosh, those marketers right? are so, so clever. Smart. Uh, anyway, so so some people are making the equivalent as a pink pole for women, blue pole for men, and it's not. The main big difference being is that Viagra is you take it when you need it, and the pole works on like on your body. It's a completely physical reaction. It pumps more blood, it makes a, a difference to your, your muscle tone in your erection, so you get better erections. Then it wears off and you use it again when you need it in the future. Mm. Not so with uh, Flibanserin, which is the drug. It will be marketed under the name Adi. For now we talk about the drug Flibanserin. Um, Flibanserin is going to work on your brain chemicals. It used to be an antidepressant, or they were working on it as an antidepressant. Mm -hmm. um, then they found that some of the effects were that women's libido started coming back. Um, and so it's a, it's a daily drug that you take um, long term to kind of build up the effects of. And it works, and the FDA will say they're not really sure how it works, but kind of to lower your serotonin levels or to, to increase your dopamine levels as opposed to increasing your serotonin levels as mm. a, a normal antidepressant might. Now, who would take this drug? Who is this drug made for? Right, uh, you see, and I think here's one of the other problems, is that it's made for uh, women who have uh, acquired or generalized hypoactive sexual desire disorder. In our terms, that is the long term for the word low sexual desire. Mm -hmm. So either low sexual desire because you've never bounced off the walls, wanting to shag everything, or low sexual desire because uh, you had it and then suddenly it went away. So it's not because... I feel like there's a whole bunch of reasons why there's There can be a ton of reasons, mm -hmm. there can be a ton of reasons, but basically it means that you don't experience sexual, like low sexual de desire because of medication or psychological issues or relationship issues or medical issues, like a whole bunch of reasons that might contribute to low desire. Mm -hmm. Um, and if we don't know what it is, then you take the pole. Now, one of the big problems with that is, is that what the hell is low desire? Yeah. Low desire, uh, you know, as opposed to who? Whose expectations? Your idea of low desire? Your partner's idea of low desire? Uh, society's idea of low desire? So it's a very sort of, you know, undefined area that, uh, that we now want to shove a pole at. And a pole that has very high risks. It has helped some women, but it's been minimal. And the risks are massive. What are the risks? Okay, so like any other drug, there's going to be sort of side effects, uh, but the main risk is that you cannot have a drop of alcohol, not a drop. The side effect notifications on the box are huge, so you'll have normal side effects like dizziness or, uh, or low blood pressure. You take alcohol, that can lead to basic, like, you know, critically low blood pressure uh, to loss of consciousness, to fainting. Um, and so it kind of, the, the, the effects around taking the drug, some question whether the, the risks uh, or the benefits outweigh the risks, which is why they'll say you can't take it for longer, I think, than eight weeks. It might even be eight months, I can't remember. Um, but there's a definite time period for which you cannot take it if you're not experiencing benefits. And the doctors will have to be certified. Like this isn't an over-the-counter drug. Your GP just won't be able to, to prescribe it to you. They will have to be certified. And there are some questions around whether that certification process is in itself very good or, or monitored. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens with the drug. Right. But what we're really speaking about here is low sexual desire right. in women. And if women are experiencing low sexual desire, maybe before going um, the route of taking a drug, what are right. some things they can do? Well, you see, I think is. Here's the thing with taking a pill is that this isn't a, because this isn't a physiological issue, this isn't a physical issue. You take a pole, your headache's gone. You take a pole, uh, your erection comes back. You know, working on desire, there are so many things that tap into to what desire means for each different woman. Now, I think what we're really speaking about here is low sexual desire in women. Now, before running off to the doctor to see if you can get this pill, surely there are other things that you can do that really have to deal with your relationship and where you are in your life. What are those things? Right. Well, there are people in place that can help you. There are therapists, there are sex therapists, there are counselors. Um, there's a broad range of, of, 
resources and options available to you before you start messing with your brain, like your brain chemistry. If there's no physical problem, first see what the underlying causes of your stress are. What your distress is around low sexual desire. What does low sexual desire mean for you? What are you happy with? Look at exploring your own idea of sexuality and do that with someone if you need to before seeing if you can pop a pole to make a problem that might not even be a big problem go away.